Chapter 7 A good name is better than precious oil, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Vexation is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the continence the heart may be gladdened. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of myrrh. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. For as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of the fool. This also is vanity. Surely oppression turns a wise man into a fool, and a gift destroys the understanding. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Be not hasty in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Say not you, how was it that the former days were better than these? For it is not out of wisdom that you inquire concerning this. Wisdom is good with an inheritance, yes, a profit to them that see the sun. For wisdom is a defense, even as money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of him that has it. Consider the work of God, for who can make that straight which he has made crooked? In the day of prosperity be joyful, and in the day of adversity consider. God has made even the one as well as the other, to the end that man should find nothing after him. All things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a righteous man that perisheth in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his evil doing. Be not righteous over much, neither make yourself over wise. Why should you destroy yourself? Be not over much wicked, neither be you foolish. Why should you die before your time? It is good that you should take hold of the one. Yes, also from the other withdraw not your hand. For he that fears God shall discharge himself to them all. Wisdom is a stronghold to the wise man, more than ten rulers that are in a city. For there is not a righteous man upon the earth that doeth good and sins not. Also take not heed unto all words that are spoken, lest you hear your servant curse you. For oftentimes also your own heart knows that you yourself likewise have cursed others. All this have I tried by wisdom. I said, I will get wisdom, but it was far from me. That which is far off and exceeding deep, who can find it out? I turned about and applied my heart to know and to search out and to seek wisdom and, and the reason of things, and to know wickedness to be folly and foolishness to be madness. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets, her hands as bands, who pleases God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Behold, this have I found, saith Koheleth, adding one thing to another to find out the account, which yet my soul sought, but I found not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. Behold, this only have I found, that God made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. All right. Let's go back up to verse 1, continuing uh, with the words of the Ecclesiastes, or the or Kohelet, this one who assembled these words. And we'll find out he takes a little bit of a different angle, uh, his approach. Um, there's a lesson in everything in life, and it really just is, uh, depends on how we're going to look at it. Sometimes we can only see things from where we stand, but often we have to take the another view in order to get the uh, the whole meaning. And sometimes we sometimes we just can't get this ability. Uh, we don't think about it. That's why it's important to study. It's important to uh, uh, contemplate or meditate upon things and. And not be hasty. So we're going to pick it up here in verse 1. A good name is better than precious oil, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. 
A good name is better than precious oil. This precious oil we're talking about is an oil that was used for anointing. That was the precious oil. Let, set aside, sanctified for that purpose only. Uh, it doesn't have to be a lot. But a, a good name is better than that. Um, and really to be known uh, in a positive manner is better than all that precious oil. The day of death and one's birth. Uh, the day that we finish the understanding of, of completion and instead of the understanding of the beginning, as we'll find out, we, when we begin, we have a long way to go. Uh, when we die, we're done. Two, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. And it's better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting. And, you know, that may not... Everybody might not agree with that. You know, it's better to have, go to a party than it is to a, a funeral or a wake. So we're going to... But if we look at it from the other perspective, another perspective, it, this is the end of everybody. Everybody's going to die. And the living will lay it to his heart. And there we're going to find people that are thinking about just that. Uh, there's always some learning to go on here. Three, vexation is better than laughter. For the sadness of the continents, the heart may be gladdened. Vexation, a little bit of uh, a little bit of that present down there. That vexation is a sadness, more like, is a little better than this than laughter, for it's by the sadness that continents is the heart, the inner person is is lifted up. We're going uh, be, to be thankful for uh, sometimes even just a little bit. For the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of myrrh. As there's a better chance that you'll act foolishly there in that house of myrrh, that place where they're having their uh, get-together, this, this rejoicing in their festivities. But the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, because there there's going to be a little more thought about what's going on. Uh, the considering things, the considering and mulling over. Five, it's better to hear the rebuke of the wise than a, for a man to hear the song of fools. It's better to hear the rebuke of the wise, a little bit of lesson coming uh, from that place, than to hear the song of fools. These are just singing, dancing, and carrying on. And there's no really no purpose uh, for it. Six, for as the crackling of thorns under a pod, so is the laughter of the fool. This also is vanity. Just like you're using the thorns, uh, of course, under a pod, this to put the uh, to feed a fire is what these thorns are being used for. Is to feed a fire, and they're crackling, they're popping, they're snapping. This is what the sound of a fool's laughter is. It's just a waste of time, because we'll find out the thorns just ain't enough there to fill a fire a lot of crackling a lot of popping going on but just not a lot of of uh, substance to burn seven surely oppression turns it up turns a wise man into a fool and a gift destroys the understanding surely oppression turns a wise man into a fool and because a lot of times they're going to lose their head and this is to lose your understanding or to lose your, your guidance. We lose our sight of where we're going. A gift destroys the understanding. A little something along the way can, can feed in the wrong intent. And uh, we just get the wrong, we get the wrong uh, impression altogether. A better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. It's better the end of it. It's better when it's all over than when it's just the beginning. And this, uh, this would apply for trouble. Um, the the beginning of, of goodness, though, and the beginning uh, of it is, is true understanding and true goodness in the earth, and we would find out there's no end of it. It ha doesn't have an end. Surely it had a beginning when the Lord spoke it. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in the spirit. And those that are patient, uh, especially in their understanding, and those patient in the mind, the spirit, 
that's what makes you up inside some are patient some aren't uh, some people are almost methodical but it's better than that than to be proud in spirit to exalt yourself and say you think you know it all it's always going to be a better to to wait um, a lot of times we learn every day nine be not hasty in your spirit to be angry for anger rests in the bosom of fools don't be in a hurry in your spirit uh, to be angry. Don't be one of those people that's quick to get mad. For a fool, that's an idiot, uh, keeps anger in his bosom. He tries to use it. It is the first, um, a lot of times a way to get what they want. Ten. Say not you, how was it that the former days were better than these? For it is not out of wisdom that you inquire concerning this don't say that that back before it was better than these days because you, you're you're not thinking uh, it's been like like this and if we, today we have it a little better surely man has increased in understanding somewhat the uh, knowledge keeps increasing and we're a lot further along than we were a few hundred years ago with our our knowledge and uh, which is is still not very much before the Lord. Uh, we have a long ways to go. The, there's still conflict in the earth, and as long as we have conflict, we'll under, know one thing, that, that wisdom and knowledge and understanding is not in it. Eleven, wisdom is good with an inheritance. Yes, a profit to them that see the sun. Wisdom is uh, good if with an inheritance as long as it was gained uh, with a little understanding sometimes uh, in other words it, it you know uh, uh, wisdom is something that can be handed down but it's not something that can be instilled uh, yes a profit to them that see the sun it, but it is something that that can reward somebody who is alive 12 for wisdom is a defense even as money is a defense but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of them that has it. For wisdom is a defense. In other words, we can defend ourselves against all kinds of things with wisdom. Even as money is a defense, just like money is used to defend people, uh, hire lawyers, hire attorneys. They uh, and this they use their money to defend themselves, but we'll find out wisdom is a defense as well, and the excellency of knowledge. Uh, that that's and this is how wit, knowledge is going to stand up. And wisdom over money every time is wisdom preserves the life of him that has it. So this one who has wisdom, now we all know what wisdom knowledge is and understanding it. The Lord said it, give it to you in the beginning. A little common sense speaks to each and every one of us. Uh, it's the law. These are the ordinances of the Lord. 13. Consider the work of God. For who can make that straight which he's made crooked? Now consider the work of God. We can take anything that's crooked, like a dog's back leg. Uh, but who can make that straight and still make it work? Man. For that's how he made it. It's it's made in that way because that's the way it works. Fourteen. In the day of prosperity, be joyful, and in the day of adversity, consider. God has made even the one as well as the other, to the end that man should find nothing after him. So in this day of prosperity, be glad, because God God made that. In the day of adversity, consider now. Right? The Lord made that. Sometimes a little adversity in life is we have to be strengthened somehow. Uh, if everything was easy, we would just lay around and kind of get parasitic, and we don't want that. God has made the one as well as the other, so the Lord made prosperity and adversity. See, prosperity is the kind of like the opposite of adversity. If you have blessing, you have cursing. Uh, if you have hot, you have cold. The other one's automatic. We, if we didn't have cold, we know what hot was. If we didn't have hot, we know what cold was. It's a really simple thing. But it's to the end that man shouldn't find nothing after him. And it, there's always 
that opposite and equal. It's always a, a, a state of confusion as far as man concerned. He doesn't know where he's coming or going. Fifteen, all things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a righteous man that perishes in his righteousness. There is a wicked man that prolongs his life in his evil doing. And all the things I've seen in the, all the days of my vanity, all, the days of my existence, for whatever good it may be, there is a, there's something I've seen, I've noticed this, that a, there's a righteous man, he, he perishes in his righteousness. And he, because now he's used it, he's come to the wrong place with his understanding, and he's raised it up as some form of the word I don't like to use, but we're going to. Uh, the word is religion. And he raises it up, and he exalts it over himself, and to to give him a, a rightful or a righteous heir, but we'll find out he perishes in that righteousness, for that was not the purpose of it all in the beginning. And then there's this wicked man; he prolongs his life in his evil doing. Uh, we'll find out the Lord prolongs it. The Lord wants to give him a chance to turn, but he just he can't quite get it. Um, and, and, you know, he, he's already in his punishment, being this wicked man. We'll find out that the Lord's got you right where he wants you, and one way or the other, you, you're going to have to turn. 16. Be not righteous over much, neither make yourself over wise. Why should you destroy yourself? Don't be too righteous, and, and don't make try to make yourself too smart. We'll find out. You're only going to destroy yourself because you're just going to find one must examine self. And when one starts to examine self, you're just going to fall shorter and shorter. That's all right. The Lord wants you to humble yourself. 17. Be not over much wicked. Neither be you foolish. Why should you die before your time? Don't be too wicked either. Don't be stupid. Uh, why should you die before? Why should you go out and get yourself killed doing something stupid? Use your knowledge. Use your understanding. Use your wisdom the good Lord give you. Have some common sense. 18. It, it is good that you should take hold of the one. Yes, also from the other. Withdraw not your hand. For he that fears God shall discharge himself of them all. Now, it's... It's not good that you should just take hold of the one, be just righteous or wicked. No. Also from the other, withdraw not your hand. You should always have your work in both and be doing, uh, do that which is correct, basically is what it works out for. And know how to tell the difference. We can learn from others' mistakes as well as our own. For he that fears God will just charge himself of them all because yeah, he has some understanding. He's going to get out of it. He's, and this is what this discharge. Um, uh, King James says he shall come forth of them all. And that's basically exactly what it means. The word is yasa, And it means to go out. To exit from or to go forth from. To leave. And he's going to leave all that trouble. Anyway, the, he, he, because he's going to go back to that foundation, that knowledge and wisdom he had in the beginning is common sense. 19. Wisdom is a stronghold to the wise man, more than ten rulers that are in the city. And wisdom is a stronghold to the wise man because he knows how to use it. He knows how to hold out. And it's better than having ten rulers. These ten rulers, uh, ten's always the law, my friends. And these rulers, because that, that's what should be ruling over you in that city. In that city, uh, we can use it as any city. These rulers, uh, it's going to be what it takes to do it uh, in, in that understanding. 20. For there is not a righteous man upon earth that does good and sins not. For there's not a righteous man upon the earth. Everybody's made a mistake. The guy says he didn't make a mistake. He just did. And there's nobody that ain't sinned. The sin is the definition of sin is the ordinances and statutes of the Lord. That's exactly the definition of it. Um, we can begin with number one, 
and work our way through the Ten Commandments since we just had reference to those laws that these would be the laws of Moses uh, that's what the definition is 21 also take not heed unto all the words that are spoken lest you hear your servant curse you and you shouldn't go around trying to listen to everything that's being said because sometimes we're going to hear what we don't want to hear and that's when your servant curses you because not everybody's got to be happy with you all the time. That's just the way it is in life. 22. For oftentimes also your own heart knows that you yourself likewise have cursed others. And we should always remember that we ourselves have made mistakes always when we try to bring guilt against somebody. We remember you're, you're not perfect. 23. All this have I tried by wisdom. I said I will get wisdom, but it's far from me. And all this I've tried. I've tried to search it out or tried, passed it through the understanding or that law that the Lord provides for us to purify, the, to get our understanding purified. And I thought I'll get a little wisdom out of it if I can try it under that measure. It's far from me. It was far from me. It's just like sometimes like that rainbow. But every step we take, it gets one step farther away. It always is the exact distance from us as our pursuit is to it. 24. That which is far off and exceeding deep, who can find it out? Who can understand why? Uh, every time we get one step closer, it gets one step far away. Nobody knows. 25. I turned about and applied my heart to know and to search out and to seek wisdom and the reason of things and to know wickedness to be folly and foolishness to be madness. I turned about, or I come around to understand. I applied my heart to know why, to search out, to seek wisdom and the reason these things are like they are on the earth. I wanted to know why wickedness is folly. Why that? Why that's called stupidity, and why it's called ignorance, and foolishness is madness, and to be like that is considered just to be crazy. Because we're going to find out that it's it's better if, if we could grasp a little knowledge in life and have a positive effect. We want to make a positive effect. That way we can uh, have a little better life. It's the way it works. It works for everybody. 26. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. Who pleases God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. And I find more bitter than death a woman and to have to live your life with a woman. And that woman means from man, and that's anything that we might get from man. Whose heart is as snares and nets, and inwardly she's just like a trap. And her hands are like bands. Their work's going to bind you up and bind you, uh, keep you from uh, having any good work. Now, whoso pleases God shall escape from her. And anybody that pleases God, well, anybody that the Lord give a little understanding, anybody will listen to that in homage and wisdom, they'll escape from her because well, the Lord's warned you. But the sinner shall be taken by her because the sinner, get that now, He's the one who doesn't obey the definition, the Aleph. The Lord said, I'm your teacher. You should not have another. 27. Behold, this have I found, saith Colette, adding one thing to another to find out the account. Now, behold, look and see, listen. This, this I found out, I've searched out, found out the matter, said Colette. Colette is that one who assembles the Ecclesiastes. It would be the Greek translation. The, uh, the one that assembles the pleasant word. I figured this out, adding one thing to another to find out the matter, is basically what he said. And this is what he's figured out. Which yet my soul sought, but I found not. One, one man among a thousand have I found, but a woman... Among all those have I not found. Yet my soul sought for, and but I didn't find any. This one man among a thousand have I found. But a woman among all those I found not. 
There ain't. I look at. There's a, a, a man's hard to find. There's not a man, hardly a man among a thousand. And a woman. That, that's one with understanding. Uh, among all those, I didn't find it all. Nineteen. Behold, this only have I found. That God made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Uh, now, this only have I found, we could say, but this I have truly found, I, that God made man upright. Made him stand up and get the has ability to be erect. And that means to be straight up and down, not curved or bent over like all the other creatures of the earth or animals that we have been compared to. God made you stand up. God made you give you that ability. But you have sought out many inventions. You seek it. In other words, God give you understanding. But you're always looking for your own. And this is just chasing the wind, my friend. We should try to pay a little respect to what understanding the Lord gave us in the beginning. Because we'll find out it's that knowledge, it's that wisdom, it's that understanding that's going to prevail. We're, more, we're going to move forward to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Turn and return. <laughs>